السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وحل الأقدة من لساني يفقه قولي ربنا زدنا علما اللهم فقهنا في الدين اللهم آمين Dear children, how are you all doing today? We hope that you all are in the best state of Iman and health. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala keep you all protected and grant you all the goodness of both worlds. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make it easy for you all to learn and understand the Quran and to follow the Quran in your lives. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make you all the best sadaqah ajariya for your parents. Allahumma ameen. So our today's ayah is ayah number 81 of Surah Al-Baqarah. Let us first do the what to what translation of this ayah. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم بلا but no من whoever كسب and سيئة evil وأحاطت به and surround him خطيئته his sins فَأُولَئِكَ so those أَصْحَابُ are the companions النَّارِ of the fire هُمْ they فِيهَا in it خَالِدُونَ will abide forever بَلَا مَنْ كَسَبَ سَيِّيَةً وَأَحَاطَتْ بِهِ خَطِيئَتُهُ فَأُولَئِكَ أَصْحَابُ النَّارِ هُمْ فِيهَا خَالِدُونَ But no, whoever has an evil and his sin has surrounded him, then such are the companions of the fire. They will abide therein forever. In the first part of this ayah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Bala man kasaba sayyi'atan But no, indeed those who seek gain in evil, here the word sayyi'atan means disbelief. It means disbelief in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, in the messenger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, in the books that were sent by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Also the word sayyi'atan means all kinds of big and small evils and sins such as shirk, zina, interest, drinking, gambling. And these sins are glorified by shaitan, meaning they are portrayed as something very beautiful. Yes? For example, the shaitan whispers in the ear of women to not wear hijab or to show her beauty to the non-mahram. And even sometimes shaitan whispers us to lie in order to save ourselves. Yes. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then says, وَأَحَاطَتْ بِهِ خَطِيئَتُهُ And are surrounded by their sins. This means that the sins of a person will overshadow his good deeds. The sins will become more than his good deeds. This happens when someone does not follow the Qur'an and the Hadith and does not fulfill his obligations of Salah, Fast, Zakah and others. And there will be some parts of the day where he doesn't remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and that is when Shaitan will conquer his mind and make him do bad deeds. Children, do you know? When we forget to say Bismillah before eating, then all the nutrients, all the energy of that food 
is taken away by the shaitan. Also, when we say the dua before sleeping, we are protected by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the whole night from the whispers of shaitan, from the evils of shaitan. So we can now imagine what happens when we do not read the du'as before sleeping. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, فَأُولَٰئِكَ أَصْحَابُ النَّارِ هُمْ فِيهَا خَالِدُونَ So they are the companions of the fire. Therein shall they abide forever. This is so, so scary that they will never get out of the hell. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala save us from the fire of the hell. Save us from Jahannam. Allahumma ameen. So in the previous ayah, the Jews said that the fire of the hell will not touch them. And even if they go to hell, they will be there only for a few days. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that this will not happen. Whoever does bad deeds, his sins will surround him and he will go to the hellfire and remain in it forever. Do you know children, the criteria for your deeds to be accepted? If not, let me tell you. For a good deed to be accepted by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it should fulfill two criterias. The first one is your iman. You should do it for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the second one is that it should be according to the way of Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Now let's take an example of a person who wants to pray four raka fard prayer in fajr. Do you think his prayer will be accepted? Well, of course, he's praying more raka. We have two fard in fajr, right? But he wants to pray four. So what do you think? Will he get good deeds? Will his salah be accepted? No. It is because the second criteria is not met. It is not what Prophet wasallam instructed us to do. Right? Our good deeds should be authentic. It should be according to the sunnah given to us by our Prophet This is because the Quran doesn't directly tell us the steps or the ways that the Salah is prayed. Where do we learn it from? Yes, we learn it from the Prophet from his sunnah. We learn from a hadith that Prophet asked the Sahaba to pray the way they saw him praying, right? So it applies to us as well. In this ayah it is said, Hum fiha khalidun, that the companions of the hell will remain in it forever. So, in this ayah the wrong perception of the Jews is being corrected by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying that they will face the consequences based on whatever deeds they do. And that their lineage, their tribe or how pious their elders were will not be taken into account or consideration. If this wasn't the case, then the son of Prophet Nuh alayhi salam would not have drowned and the wife of Prophet Lut alayhi salam would not have been punished. Yes? So may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us all the opportunity to learn the religion in the right way and to practice the religion in the best way. Allahumma ameen. Alhamdulillah, with this we come to the end of our today's session. Subhanak Allahumma wa bihamdika. Ashhadu an la ilaha illa anta astaghfiruka wa atubu ilayk. Wassalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.